Hi Soapsters. In today's video we're going to be looking at making a hot process soap. Now this is a little bit different to the stuff I normally do on the channel but this is really a soap uh, using a hot process method in a crock pot or a slow cooker and it gives you this wonderful kind of ready to use soap. Maybe cure it for a week or two for its best results. So without any further ado let's get on to the video. So with the hot process set, you're obviously using a crock pot. So here in my um, crock pot, I've got oils melting. Now they're exactly the same oils I'm using for this hot process that I used for the, the high temperature hot process, um, which was cocoa butter, lard, olive oil, coconut oil, so on and so forth. And I'll leave the recipe for this down in the description box below. Now the whole point of hot process soap is that you're doing um, everything hot so that you're forcing your soap to go through gel and to basically saponify faster. Um, they do uh, benefit from being cured a little bit, but these are usable straight out of the um, mold. So I'm gonna make up my lye solution here, um, and it's just your standard lye solution that you make up if you're making a cold process, um, but this time you don't need to worry too much about cooling that lye down so that it's at room temperature. Because we are working at a, a hotter, higher temperature, we don't need to worry about that uh, temperature being quite so um, low in the lye. The one thing I will say though, be careful with hot lye and hot oils um, and volcanoing. And a little bit later in the video, I'll show you exactly what a volcano looks like um, and how to deal with that one. So you can see the pot I'm using for my lye solution is this um, little PP, I say polypropylene uh, jar with a screw top lid. I like these because I do a lot of cold process. I can make my lie up in advance. I can then pop it into this little jar and I can leave it to cool down with the jar ever so slightly um, undone. Uh, so what we're going to do now is add our lye solution into our oils. And you'll see here that almost instantaneously we get that reaction happening. Um, and you can see it starting to saponify because the oils are hotter. Everything is going to happen quicker. So going in with the stick blender now, we're going to bring this through emulsion into trace. Um, and we're going to go for kind of a medium trace on this one. And then we're going to just let it cook out. Now, I am by no means an expert in hot process soap making. I am far more a cold process soap maker. Um, but I do think it's important that as a soap maker in general, you get to grips with every um, style of soap making that you can just to understand a little bit more about soap and soap making and why things do the way they do. That's not to say you're not going to specialise in one thing, but give them all a go and see if they work for you. Because sometimes you'll find that you need soap quickly and you need to do a hot process or you want embeds and you need to use melt and pour. I think all forms of soap making are valid and they have their place in various styles, techniques and designs. And incidentally, the stick blender that I'm using here is actually from Aldi. It's a cordless stick blender. Uh, from Aldi and it was a very very good bargain. I find it a little bit fast sometimes for doing uh, cold process soaps. Um, it introduces a lot of air into the the mix but for a um, cordless um, rechargeable stick blender it's awesome. If you are new to soaping my one trick tip that I would give you with regards to your stick blender is have one where the actual bell and the shaft come off of the uh, main body of the stick blender. That way you can clean the shaft and the bell much more easily than leaving it on the um, machine. And also you don't run that risk of kind of um, starting it as you're cleaning it. So make sure if you don't have one where the bell comes off, you unplug it every time that you clean it off just to save those fingers. So we're getting to a really nice trace there and we're going to pop the lid on it in a second. If you'd like to see the hot process high temperature soap that I did um, a little while ago, check out the card that's on screen now. This is your reminder to subscribe to the channel and like this video. Now let's get on with the next step. So we've left our um, batter here cooking. Um, we're doing a cook now. So we're cooking it um, to um, various stages of saponification. Now there are three stages that um, your soap will go through. The first one is this kind of pudding consistency where it's certainly thick and it's gone into a nice thick trace um, and it just looks like a, a kind of custard or a, or a pudding if you are in the US. Um, so that's the first sign. Now things like pudding stage and applesauce stage I think are quite subjective. 
But the third stage in hot process soap is called Vaseline, and it will become quite obvious when your soap has hit that Vaseline stage. But in all cases, I would recommend that you get yourself some pH test strips. And when you get to a stage where you think it is cooked, give it a quick check with a pH test strip as long as it is within that kind of um, nine ish um, on the scale. You shouldn't have any lye left over in it and you should be absolutely fine then to pop that into a mould and just let it set up. So you can see here we're starting to get thicker and thicker. And what you'll notice in a second is that um, after like the, the second cook, we're starting to get a little bit of um, separation happening and it started to look a little bit less um, homogenous and a little less uh, like things are working. Do not worry at this stage. Um, the soap is just saponifying and you're cooking it out and you just need to kind of let it go through that stage. And then what you'll notice is it starts to gel and come back to a nice homogenous mixture. So don't freak out when um, it kind of does these things and you think, well, what's going on? So talking of volcanoes, this is a prime example of why A, you should watch your soap at all times and not walk away or do something else whilst you are cooking a soap like this, particularly in a small container. And the second one is um, why hot process soap can cause volcanoing. This is a volcano happening in real time as you're seeing it. And you can see how that um, batter is kind of rising up and um, it's really starting to grow. It's bubbling. It's coming right up to the top of that. And in actual fact, it's going to push the lid off. If this happens to you, don't panic about it. What is happening here is that soap is just kind of really expanding. And the most dangerous part about this is you've got a lot of hot soap that potentially could be caustic spilling out over onto a table, onto the floor. So if you don't have a dedicated room like I have and you're doing this in your kitchen, that's why you really need to watch it. I wasn't watching it. And this is where we got to. And you'll notice the texture has now changed somewhat. And it's moved from being that nice pudding consistency to, and I believe this is now the apple sauce stage, and it has become a completely different kettle of fish. It looks like something is going wrong. It's not. It is absolutely fine. And you can stir this down. So you can see there that I got to, it went right up to the top of the, um, the slow cooker. I then just stirred it back in. And I'm coming back every kind of five or 10 minutes and just giving it another stir. I'm on a low heat and I'm just stirring it. And what you'll notice here is as we're doing that, um, it's starting to come back together. We're getting some light bits of soap happening in the butter. Keep stirring it at this point and do um, that. Then put the lid back on, give it another 10 minutes, pop the lid on. Now, this is the way that I've done it. There may be people out there and please, please comment in the way that you make your, your hot process soap and suggest ways that I can improve on this one. As I say, I'm not an expert in this, but it's something I'm learning and something that I'm working with in order to get better at it. Um, and you have to start somewhere. And I'm documenting that process so that you, if you do cold process and you wanted to give it a go, you can give it a go. You can do these things and go out and, and enjoy another way of making soap. Um, like I'm, I am, I enjoy making soap. I love it. And this is my kind of um, experiment in hot process. Whether it's right or wrong, let me know in the comments below. So basically, this is, is me just cooking this out and looking at the stages. So I couldn't give you a definitive kind of time that you're going to do this for. But if you look now, the texture has changed and we're getting into this Vaseline stage. It's getting shiny. It's getting thick. It's getting unctuous. Um, and it's got that kind of look of Vaseline to it. Obviously, it's not going to look white and clean because of the oil colours that we're using. But this is where you're kind of looking to approach. And at this point, you can either kind of start checking your pH. If your pH is fine, get it into the mould. Um, or you can cook it out a little bit longer. The longer you cook it, the more water you drive off, um, the more likelihood you're going to get a thicker and thicker batch. So again, I'm stirring this again, looking. We're getting to that Vaseline stage. We've got this kind of nice fluffy soap. Um, now, aesthetically, I would like to be able to get a much better liquid um, hot process soap or, or at least a pourable um, hot process soap. Now, maybe that's I need to add more yogurt. I need to do something differently. And again, I'm experimenting with this. I want to try these things. If you've got any um, ideas that I can try, 
please let me know. And at this point, we've got a beautiful shine on the soap. You can see that's now looking very, very much like a Vaseline. And then as you stir it, you kind of take a look at that off. But it's getting to the point now where I think, yes, I'm happy with how this is looking. Um, and I'm going to give this a little test. Um, I don't show that on camera, but I'm going to test to make sure that it's within the pH range that I'm happy with. And then we'll get some colour into it and get it poured into our mould. So now we're at the stage that I'm happy with, as soap has saponified. The extra ingredients that I need to add are going into here. Uh, this is some glycerin that's going in. It's a humectant, draws the moisture to the skin. Great ingredient to have in soap. Uh, also some yoghurt. Um, I've heard that yoghurt is a great thing to add in there because it does give you a far more um, liquid uh, soap that you're able to pour. And what you saw just going in there was my fragrance oil. And in this one I used, I think it was uh, Invictus. Uh, so we're going to stir all those in and then get it into the mould. And I'm actually going to colour a portion of this and try and get a bit of swirl going. Um, and again, anyone that can recommend a better way of getting some um, more fluid soap, that'd be great. The one thing I do like about hot process soap is because you're adding your fragrance oil in at a later stage, um, you can get a better smell. You can get a better throw of that fragrance in the soap than you get in a cold process soap because obviously you're, you're forcing it through saponification and you can lose some of the volatiles that make up a fragrance oil. So that's what I kind of really like about a hot process soap. Um, I'm not as keen on the uh, visual of these soaps. They're quite rustic looking uh, and not something I would be particularly happy to sell unless I can get something that gives me a bit more of an aesthetic look. However, there are people out there that love the look of soaps that have that more rustic look to them, that have that more um, kind of wholesome look to them. And I'm not saying that that's wrong or right. It's personal preference and you, you do you. Um, but it's the one thing I would like to get a little bit more of a smoothness out of the soaps. And again, as it's cooling, it's going to be setting up basically. So at this point, I'm like, mm, maybe I've overcooked it. Maybe I haven't cooked it enough. Maybe I haven't put enough yogurt in it. I need to experiment with these. But we're getting a bit of a swirl in there. So let's get that into the mould, get it set up, and we'll come back tomorrow to see the soaps cut. And here we go. We're trying to get this soap into the mould and it's very thick and very gloopy and very clumpy. I did give it a good bang down to try and get as many of the air pockets out of it as I could. And I seem to have succeeded with that one. Um, but it's one of those things is that some people like it, some people don't. Um, and at this point, I was having a little bit of a panic and going, I've just got to get it in before it sets up. And let's get this soap cut. So the colours are um, have kind of softened down a little bit. I could have added probably a little bit more colour into the coloured portion, um, but I'm not unhappy with it as a kind of second go of making hot processed soap in a crock pot. I'm not too um, disappointed with this. Um, again, rustic look, I want to try and get a much fluid, more fluid batter. So I need to do some research and, and listen to people that make hot process a lot more. But let's cut through this and see what the inside looks like. So this is my multi-bar cutter. I like using this one. You get nice even um, cuts on it. One thing with multi-bar cutters, and I'm sure you've heard me say this in some other videos, uh, you want to bring it down, line everything up, and then use a smooth and even pressure throughout the soap, easing up towards the end of the cut. So as you go through the bottom of the soap, you don't pull out any of the soap at the bottom. And this was a really nice soap to cut. And there we have the inside of our soap looking fantastic. And I'm actually rather pleased with how that soap looks. So if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. It really helps me grow and allows me to make more videos and tutorials for all of you. When you subscribe, don't forget to click the bell icon if you'd like to get notified when a new video is uploaded. And thanks a lot, Soapsters. I'll see you again next time.